Hello lovely, in this video we're gonna give you model answers and vocabulary for transportation, a new IELTS speaking part 1 topic. I'm Maria. And my name is Rory, and we're here to help you prepare for IELTS speaking and have a little bit of fun along the way. So transportation, Rory, are you excited about this topic now? Yes, because it's something I can actually talk about, hooray! I don't have to muddle my way through it like before. Okay, are you ready for the joke? I have the joke. We should start with a joke, you know. With we should start with a quality... joke? Oh yeah, yeah, with a quality dead joke. Oh, okay. What did the taxi driver say to the wolf? W wolf, wolf, yeah? Who got into his cab? I have no idea. Werewolf! Werewolf. Did you get it, listener? Can we transport ourselves to the, to the questions part, please? Do you often use public transportation? Well, if I had a choice, I wouldn't, but it's unavoidable now because I don't have access to private transport anymore. So, public transportation. So, the question is about do you use public transportation and how do we use the phrase public transportation? Is it a public transportation? The? No, just public transportation in general. But then, if you talk about the public transport in my country for specific public transport. Yes, and we use public transportation or use public transport or we take public transport. You can take public transport to a place. And then it's unavoidable. You cannot avoid it. It's unavoidable, you said. Yeah. So I use public transportation because like, where, where, where do I go without it? Yeah. yeah if, if something is unavoidable, then you, you just, well, it, it's, you can't stop using it, basically. I could drive a car, but that would be very illegal and very dangerous, considering I haven't passed my test yet. Oh, not yet. You've been doing it, I think, like for two months, half a year. I, no, we should, I've, I've had like, um, what, five lessons? That five lessons today. Actually, at the time this is going out, um, or sorry, at the time this is being recorded, I will have had five lessons and I was in a lesson before I came to this, um, before I came to this recording. So I was a little bit late because of that. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, I will have made more progress. <laughs> Yeah, you said that you don't have access to private transport anymore. So private transport, your private car, right? We should probably talk about the difference between public transport and private transport. So public transport generally is stuff that's used by, or sorry, means of transport that are used by lots and lots of people um, and they're, they don't own it directly or um, they haven't paid for it um, like they've maybe paid a little bit for it, but they haven't paid a huge amount. Whereas private transport is something that you own um, and you have control over and you've paid a huge amount of money for. So a car, for example, is private transport. Even if you're renting it, you're still paying a lot of money for it. Um, and in the same way, um, a taxi. Now, I always think that taxis are private transport, but what do you think? Really? I think it's public. It's still, no, it's not yours. I know, but you still pay more and it's still for you, so it's kind of private. Taxis are on the borderline. Interesting. Also, dear listener, watcher, viewer, if you have a private scooter or a private bicycle, it's also your private transport. Did you take public transport when you were a child? I think if we didn't have the car, then we would. Um, oh. Unless, oh yes, unless I was visiting my grandmother, um, then I would always take the bus by myself. And, uh, well, that all felt very grown up at the time, even though it was a very short journey to make. The bus routes are not very long, at least where I'm from. You also say that um, I would always take the bus. So take the bus, take the train. It's always the bus, or I can say, like, I usually take a train, I take a taxi, I take a bike. Well... Bikes are private transport, aren't they? Unless it's a rented bike provided by the city, because you have these in Moscow and they're in London and some other big cities as well. And you mentioned something about bus routes. Routes, like the... Where do the buses go, right? Yes, um, you could also... You, um, it's the, it's the, the, the journey the buses go on on the map, like there are different places they stop. But I should have also talked about um, when you can get the bus too, because they have bus timetables and train timetables. I didn't talk about that, but I should have. 
And the second conditional, dear listener. So Rory told us, if we didn't have the car, if we didn't have the car, but Rory does have a car, then we would take the bus, right? So the second conditional. Or for example, if I could, I'd take a taxi. If I had more money, I'd buy a car and use my private vehicle. Vehicle is another synonym for a car or a bus or um, what else? Like any vehicle on the road or a truck, for example. Do most people prefer public transport? Well, if I were to guess, I would say no. Um, I suppose, I, I think they use it out of necessity more than actually wanting um, to do it because even green-minded people would probably admit that private transport is a lot more convenient than public transport. You said that you use it out of necessity. So I use public transport out of necessity. Which is very similar to saying because it's unavoidable. So if you use something out of necessity, it's because you need to. Um, not because you want to. You can also say, I have to use public transport. I have to, I have to, have to use it, right? I don't like it much, but I have to use it. And usually, what do you use? Like trains, buses, taxis, if you think it's a public transport kind of thing. Um, what are the trams? A public transport buses. kind of thing. Do you mean a mode of public transport? <laughs> a mode. A mode or a form. There are many forms of public transport, many modes. Or of means. Public transport. Yes. Or means as well. Means of public transport. You take a bus as a means... Oh, sorry. You use a bus as a means of public transport. Yes. You were saying? Yeah. You use a bus as a means of public transport. A means of. Okay. It's a bit strange. Yeah. Rory, have you ever seen a trolley bus? Yeah. Well, only in Moscow, though. When I first moved to Moscow, I just thought they were trams, but I was lectured that trolley buses and trams are very different things. So, since you are the expert here, you tell me. Yeah, we used to have trolley buses. It's like trams, trams and trolley buses. But not anymore. I think we, we don't have trolley buses. In Moscow. You don't? Hmm. No, I don't think so. Or I've in Moscow, I, I've well, I haven't seen one for a long time. Maybe oh, they, they went extinct. They're kind of like a dinosaur. No, they, they were probably out. replaced by the electric buses. You know, the, the bendy ones. Yeah. They're electric. Yeah, yeah. Electric buses. All right, electric, like e buses. But a trolley bus is a thing, or it was. Who knows? Do you have. Actually, here's an interesting question for people outside of Russia. Does any other country have trolley buses? Because I never saw them before I went to. Um, before I went to Moscow. Rory, um, tell me, what are these green-minded people? Oh, but just people that don't want lots and lots of... Um, oh, how best to describe it. Yeah, sort of um, <laughs> environmentally unfriendly things on the road. So ideally, green-minded people probably want people to use public transport more often. But public transport can be inconvenient, whereas because you have to go somewhere in order to get it. Whereas if you have your own private transport, then you can just jump in it and go where you like. How green are you? Hmm? Could you write in the comments? Are you like uh, a, I thought a you were asking me directly person? because I oh, am no. not green at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm not green. Sorry. What's the most popular means of transport in your hometown? Definitely cars. You would see it immediately if you lived here. They line both sides of the street. Uh, thank heavens there's only about a thousand people here. Otherwise, um, everything would be packed and it would be impossible to move. You said something about like line with. That's a nice verb to use about cars oh, and Oh, yeah. The street is lined with cars or parked cars because um, you have them parked on both sides and they go in a line. Um, I make it sound like my um, my village is actually like some sort of uh, hellhole that's overrun with cars, but it's not. There are lots of cars, but it's still quite nice despite this. And you can say, for example, thanks heavens, I don't have many cars. Like, thanks heavens, like thank you universe, yeah, that we don't have too many people who have too many cars. Yes, because that would be awkward. Is driving to work popular in your country? I would say so. Um, and I would say it with more certainty if I could see the statistics more closely. Um, certainly, it's um, it just seems obvious since places where I live are so far, sorry, places in my country are so far apart. 
A good strategy is uh, to talk about statistics. So, for example, the examiner asks you, is this more popular or is this popular? And you go, well, if I could see the statistics, the statistics, okay, the numbers, if I could see the statistics, um, Rory said, um, if I could see the statistics, I, I, I would tell you more about it, for example, or my answer would be more specific. Yeah. So when you have no idea what to say, just uh, this, use these statistics. Oh, I don't know the statistics. I haven't seen the statistics. I haven't seen the statistics. But if I had, then maybe, or probably. And then a nice one is, I would say so. I'd say so. I would say so. I'd say so. Like, what do you think? Is this more popular? Is this more popular? Hmm, I would say so. I'd say that cars are more popular, right? Or are cars popular? I would say so. It's like if you're not sure. Will you use public transport more in the future? Well, if I were to guess, I would say probably not. I mean, um, I like working from home um, and, well, private transport is much more convenient. Um, and to be honest, with the worsening weather, the roads are becoming increasingly um, unnavigable. So I, I can see um, less and less public transport in my future. Private transport or public transport is more convenient, okay? Or is much more convenient. If, for example, we have um, a lot of traffic jams, right? I can say that, okay, going by metro is much more convenient. Why not comfortable? Can I say it's comfortable? Like, you know, my jacket is comfortable. Mm. Well, convenient is to do with... Shiny. Oh, I'm going to really simplify this. Convenient is about access, whereas comfort is about feeling comforted. Like it's about having a good feeling. They're close, but they're not the same. You said this word, unnavigable. Unnavigable. The Unnavigable. roads are unnavigable, which means you cannot navigate them because they're becoming, well, the condition is getting worse. Uh, say it again. Unnavigable. Unnavigable. Yeah, the roads are becoming unnavigable. Just unnavigable. Mm -hmm. Unnavigable. Are there any traffic problems in your area? When I think about what it's been like since I moved, I wouldn't say so. I think the worst case scenario is if you get stuck behind a tractor or a flock of sheep. But um, there's not, there aren't any major problems like traffic jams or like majorly congested roads or anything like that. When we talk about traffic jams, the word to use is congested. The roads are congested. They're full of cars. The cars are everywhere. So the roads are congested means they are packed with cars. There are a lot of traffic jam. And also you can use the word traffic congestion. Also very easy to pronounce. Traffic congestion. Yes, traffic congestion is a big problem in my hometown. Or the roads are congested. Yes. Is there a difference between having traffic jams and traffic congestion? Mm, I don't think so. I think they're the same. In my head, I feel like traffic jams are when nothing is moving, but traffic congestion is when it's moving, but just like really slowly. Oh, okay. Interesting. Right. But what's the word that you use to mean that it's just, it's not moving? It's like dreadlock? Oh, um, yeah, gridlocked. Gridlock, yeah. And how can Grind you say the sentence? <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, I don't know. The roads are totally gridlocked. In, oh, in Moscow on a Friday afternoon, they're gridlocked. And if anyone subscribed to our premium podcast, they will remember when I spent like two minutes describing how much I hated the situation. Oh, yeah, that's a nice story. Rory's story in uh, our premium. Uh, no, it's, it's not a nice story. I was not in a happy mood at all. But if you are interested in hearing about me being miserable, then subscribe to our premium. The links are in the description below. Premium. Uh, yes, and our premium episodes do help us to keep um, the videos um, free and to keep our Speaking Part 1 episodes free, like audio and video as well. They help to pay for my driving lessons as well. Thank you. <laughs> and my shoes. And this, you know. <sighs> yeah, they, they helped pay for my driving lessons and Maria's <laughs> rabid consumerism. <laughs> no, it's just maintenance. Awesome. Um, I'm high it maintenance. It is not maintenance. They are shoes. You have three million pairs. Shut up. <laughs> Lorries and tractors. 
yeah, if uh, you live in a small village like Rory in the middle of nowhere, you can see a lot of sheep or trucks or horses because um, Rory is Tractors. somewhere, I don't know, out there, tractors, yeah, it's like a popular means of uh, transportation. Somewhere out there, like, in, if this was Russia, then I'd be in the middle of nowhere, but it's Scotland, I'm like, I don't know, two hours from the nearest major town, that's not far to go. Oh, come on, from the major town in Scotland, but Scotland well, is... Well, no, from know. a major city in Scotland, sorry, the nearest town is about 20 minutes away, that's not so bad. Oh, okay, all right. The nearest town has 20,000 people. And Marie is just thinking, so the population of my street. How would you improve transport in your town? Well, if I were in charge of the local authority, I would definitely have, well, um, what would it be? Um, a greater number or um, vastly improved bus links between the villages because there aren't many right now and it would make my life more convenient. And if I had an infinite budget, then I'd build a light railway between them as well. But I think that's probably impractical and like probably exorbitantly expensive as well, thinking about it. A nice strategy is to use the second conditional and say, if I were in charge, you know? So how would you, what would you do to improve? the road situation yeah anytime you're asked about improving something you could just say well if i were in charge or if i had the power unlimited power if i were in charge of the local authority right or the local council or if i were in charge of the government i'd do something and rory you said um, that i'd probably have a light railway what's a light railway a light railway is just um well it's it's exactly what it sounds like it's a railway that um it's not used for transporting heavy goods it's used for transporting people it's um only really got two tracks it's relatively inexpensive this is compared to railways which are used to transport like livestock and um, raw materials from mines and things although you don't really get the phrase heavy rail i never considered that but you do get light railways you can see an example of this in london there's something called the docklands right uh, light railway and that um that's a pretty good example so you can google that if you want to improve the buses you can say if i were in charge i'd improve the bus links links you know the the routes right and the connection do you know there are some villages where i am that only see a bus like one time a week no rory i don't understand why you are out there when you can be here with me in you know a massive megalopolis so, <laughs> surrounded by plants yes we do have plants and we see we have plants everywhere <laughs> green-minded people <laughs> All right, and the last one for us today is exorbitantly expensive. Well, no, exorbitantly expensive is like like really, really expensive. Um, it's used to describe like major public works. If you think about it, where I live right now, in the local area, there's only 100,000 people maximum. And building a light railway, even though it would be really convenient, you couldn't well, it would like maybe be all of the tax money that they gathered from everyone here for one year to build. That's exorbitantly expensive. And then they can't pay for anything else. Sweet. Rory, what's your favorite means of transport if we are talking green? Would it be a uh, scooter, a bicycle, your feet, horses, the train, the train. sheep? The train is the train. Like, environmentally friendly, mostly. It's more environmentally it? friendly than having three million cars on the road. Okay, Scottish trains are environmentally friendly. Uh, I have doubts about trains. Mm. Compared mm -hmm. to taxis and cars, a train is less polluting than a car. Really? Like, yeah, okay. like not one car, but think about um, how many people can travel on a train. Let's say 1,000, whereas, uh, and they can go back and forth between everything. Whereas if you had 1,000 cars taking people to different places, that there would be much more pollution from that. Wouldn't there? What about a donkey? If you want to ride to work on a donkey, like a donkey walks slower than a human being. So it's going to take longer. That's not convenient. You yeah, have yeah, to feed them. It's time consuming, yeah. And yes. donkeys are also <laughs> high, high maintenance, you know. So. <laughs> what a random animal to pick as well, a donkey. 
Thank you very much for listening. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Please uh, smash the like button. And if you do want to say thank you, if you want to buy me a cup of nice coffee, and if you want to buy Rory some nice Scottish tea. Driving lessons? Whiskey. 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 Robots will! Proper English whiskey! You can donate. Uh, the link is in the description. Thank you very much again for your support. Bye. Bye. I can hear birds sing singing. I hope it's not a fire drill. I hope it's not the end of the world. That would be really awkward.